Hi everybody, this is uh, Tyler with uh, another review here. Today we're just going to be doing a unboxing of a Scout Epic rifle. So I went out to Scout, it would have been about a week ago now, last Friday, and I went and toured the factory and got a little bit of information as far as how to put the guns together, how the parts work inside the guns, and you know, things that are coming down the pipeline here for the company as far as with their barrels and other things. So I just want to share some of that information here. So when you buy a Scout Epic, these guns are, I would say, tailored for bench rest in particular. You could use this probably for hunting as well, but I would say it's really designed to be a top tier uh, competitor rifle in bench rest. So what you get here is this nice Plano case here. It says Scout Air Rifles on it. It actually up here at the top has a screw that you can use for a uh, pressure equalizer for like when you're flying and traveling. Now this is probably one of the nicest cases I've ever seen with an air rifle. Uh, it is a really, really nice case. When you open this up, it's got this nice thick foam in here. And inside the case with every rifle, your rifle typically comes with the minus barrel installed. You get three barrels per caliber and they come with carbon fiber wraps already on them. Bill likes the uh, minus, the minus barrel used in the guns when he's shooting them in. He typically is shooting in every single rifle that leaves the factory, so it has to pass his approval before it goes out the door. So it comes with the minus barrel already installed. So then what you get here is your 30 caliber straight, and then you have your 30 caliber, and this should be your, uh, yep, your plus. So why would you get three barrels with a caliber? And the reason for that, if say you want to shoot out of this 30 caliber, you wanted to shoot the 50.15 grain JSBs, maybe the minus barrel doesn't shoot them real great and the straight barrel shoots them a little bit better, but then you get to the plus size barrel and then it's really grouping well. It just allows you to be able to change the actual diameter of the barrel by like a hundredth of an inch, which doesn't seem like much, but it makes a huge difference when you're trying to get, you know, the perfect group for your target shooting. Now, these guns come with a cheek riser here that can be adjusted with these screws here on the back of the gun. And then you also have here length of pull adjustment on this knob here. And then here you have an up and down travel for your butt pad. And then you got your Picatinny here going across the top. It comes with a moderator already installed. Now on the short guns, I would say that the moderator doesn't work as well as you may think it's going to. It's really on there to help strip away that air from the pellet to give it the best chance of flying straight and true to the target. Um, I had heard that there may be some one working on some aftermarket equipment to be able to attach other moderators to it, but we'll have to wait and see when that comes. You also have here your bottle. Now, these used to be attached directly onto the gun here. They now have included this here, which is a, let me flip it around here so you can see it. What they've included here is this. This is an on off valve for your air from your tank. Now you may be saying to yourself, well, why do I need that? Well, these guns are actually recommended to be stored, not under pressure. 
So most of us with air rifles have always stored our guns with air in the gun. They actually recommend not storing the gun with pressure on the O-rings. And that's to help with accuracy when you pull it out to use it because those O-rings can kind of uh, stick a little bit. And it causes some variation with that first shot when you get it out and you're using it. So this also is beneficial if you're on the target shooting circuit, you know, doing bench rest competitions. You have to have your gun safe before you can go and leave the bench. So what you can do, you can shut this off, shutting off the air to your tank. Then you can open up your bleeder and let your air out. And then your gun's essentially safe. Uh, once the magazine's removed, you got no air left in the unit. You go into your next wave of uh, competition, tighten down your bleed screw and crack this. Don't open it wide open right away. There are O-rings in here. Just slowly open it so you can hear the hissing where it's starting to uh, balance inside the gun and refill the void there. Once you hear it stop deep, or, uh, pressurizing the unit, then you can go ahead and open it all the way wide open. But don't just pop it all the way open and let all the air rush in right away. So that is something new that they've come out with on the gun. It is electronic. So that's something that people are a little leery of now, I used to shoot paintball when I was younger, and Scout comes from a paintball background. Uh, I believe that they make the Lux paintball gun, from what I had heard when I was there. And if their electronics can hold up to paintballing, they're surely going to hold up to us air gunners, as I know firsthand that we treat our air guns better than most paintballers treat their paintball gear. Uh, when I was young and would go out paintballing, my gun would be wet or muddy and I'd just toss it in my bag and then get it out the next time I needed it. As air gunners, we typically try to not use our guns out in the rain if we can help it. And if we do, we're, you know, wiping them down, taking good care of them. So a little bit different, but the electronics that are here in this handle and that function, the solenoid that fires the gun, if they're being used in the paintball field, these are going to hold up to anything that we're going to be using them for. Now on the gun, you've got on the bottom here, you've got your high pressure and your low pressure valve. The low pressure you don't need to necessarily adjust. That is something that is set there at the factory and here in your Quick start guide. It actually talks about where those regulators should be set or when you're starting out with them as far as the low pressure. Now that low pressure valve, the purpose of that is that allows the gun to run at a lower pressure because it's helping to open that valve so that this gun here in a 30 caliber, I think is running at like about 800 PSI around that range there and you can run them lower to get the same velocities. Now, when you're doing this and you're using these lower velocities uh, or lower air pressures, it's allowing you to get more shots. So you're gonna get more shots out of the gun and it's also not as violent when you're shooting it because as you know, when you have those higher pressures, you're throwing a bigger, heavier hammer weight down the internals of the gun and it's smacking that hammer or the hammer smacking that valve at the other end. This is a hammerless system. So you're not having any of that. So it's a very uh, pleasant shooting gun. And when you're using it, you're not uh, feeling some of that uh, energy that you do when you're using other guns that use a heavy hammer to smack the valve to get the air to release. Yeah, and so in 30, this is a 25 inch barrel. It's saying in here, your PSI is anywhere from 800 to 1,900 PSI. 
to get the velocity that you would be looking for with your pellets. So you're running much lower than what most 30 calibers are running. And then if you go up to the 35 caliber barrel, so it's going to be a little bit longer. And I had asked about this. If you have the 35 inch barrel, you actually have to remove it from the gun and you would have to store it here at the top because it won't fit into the case. But that 35 caliber in a, or the 35 inch barrel in a 30 caliber, you're looking at 700 PSI to 1,600 PSI per shot to get the energies that you need for those pellets, which is remarkable to me because if you look at say something like the gauntlet, that's regulated in 30 caliber at 2,800 PSI. And this is operating at, at the low end, let's say 800 PSI. Now granted at 800 PSI, it's not gonna be throwing the, the pellet out at a thousand feet per second, but it's, in the 880 range at that psi pressure which is to me amazing so <clears throat> your trigger here is a actuation or a electronic switch basically to make your solenoid in here fire so it is extremely light and when i say extremely light i'm going to say it's probably like a two ounce trigger so one of the safety features that they put in here is this activation button here on the inside. So before you shoot, the gun comes in a mode, it's called limited. And the limited mode, the reason that it's set up that way is so that you can learn how to use the gun and it makes you use those safety features. There are settings in here where you can put it into hunt mode and that shuts off the voice. Now, I wouldn't go doing that right away because it's nice to know that you bump the trigger and it'll say trigger fault. And that's saying you hit this without turning off the safety or turning on the actual firing mechanism. So <clears throat> on the gun here, down here you have a screen at the bottom with a button here. Powering on. You hit it twice. Welcome to the epic experience. Firing mode limit. Battery level 100%. So it's going to tell you what firing mode it's in. It's also going to tell you the battery percentage. Now, the way that this is set up currently, if you were to try to shoot this, it says fire fault. And that means that you, fire, you bumped that trigger without hitting your activation switch there to actually get the gun to fire. So the trigger is extremely light. I don't know if you can see this on here, but fire, fault. I, I'm fire, barely fault. touching that and it's going off. It's truly set up for bench rest with a trigger that light. You're very unlikely to be pulling your shots um, you can adjust the trigger you know if you're not going to be using it for bench rest you may want the trigger to be a little bit heavier so that when you're out in the woods or out on the target range you're not having to worry about bumping that and it going off it's something that'll take a little bit of time to get used to but i find the trigger to be exceptional with the weight that it is currently then on the side here, you've got your side lever. Now there's no spring, so it's very light to cock it back and to load it. And in the back here, your magazine is magnetic. It would fit into here. And all this is doing is feeding the probe back and to put the pellet in. Inside the gun, there's only one moving part inside the gun, and that's the actual valve itself. So pretty awesome in that regard. There's not a whole lot of springs inside the gun to work on, but if you did get into something that you needed to replace, they have sent you a toolkit. So inside here you have 
palm swells so that you can change out your palm swells here. And then it also has in here your magazine, which again, this is a magnetic magazine. So to open it up, there's a spot here on the side. And then you actually need to pick how much tension you want on the slugs or pellets, whatever it is that you're trying to shoot out of the gun. They recommend to at least rotate it two times and then you just start feeding it in and that controls how much tension is on the actual pellets as they're going around there and then you just snap the cover back on. Comes with all the Allen wrenches. have in here some grease for your o-rings you have your this is your barrel tool and that's to be able to take the barrel apart to change out you know calibers and things of that type then over here you have on this end this is for your shut off valve on your tank. Got your charger. Lock and then you got your charging cord. And then you've got here your valve tool so that you can remove the valve if you need to to swap it out. So like in paintball, you can remove your regulators. There's actually in here, this ring here, you can pull that out. That allows you to actually unscrew and pull out your valves and they're color coded. So then you can just go to your local dealer and say, hey, my high pressure valve's not working properly. They can actually just give you a whole new valve. You can drop that in, put your uh, tension clip back in there to hold it in, and then readjust it back to the pressure that you need. And you can adjust this up and down while under pressure because these actually will bleed off the air as you're adjusting them. So it's not like uh, some other regulators that are out there on the market where you have to depressurize the gun to work on it. You can actually adjust up and down while under pressure, but you can actually just switch out the parts, which is nice. So you can just go bring that into me and say, Hey, my high pressure valve isn't working. I could grab one off the shelf, give it to you. You put it in and you can do all that yourself. You don't actually have to bring the gun in for me to work on. And then you can actually go and you can take out the valve. I could just give you a new valve and you could put it in and get it working. Then in here, You've got your two springs that are in the gun, and then you got your different O-rings for the different parts on the gun. And one of the other nice features of this is they send you these parts, but online they actually give you the blown up schematics so that you can go and you can look online and you can see exactly how and where the part is that you need to replace. So that's also extremely nice. But there's not many companies that give you the actual equipment and the parts to be able to work on the gun yourself. This is really designed to be a end user uh, repairable gun. So that's extremely nice. So you don't have to necessarily be an expert at airsmithing or anything to work on these. If you have questions, you can always ask, but a lot of this is very simple plug and play kind of features where you can just take out one whole unit or part and then just swap it out for a new one. So that's actually a really nice on the gun here. You've also got over here, this is your ratchet system. So you can actually undo this 
and that's what holds your barrel in and you can slide it out now down here at the end there's actually it looks like little jaws that actually grab it and pull it into place this barrel's tensioned so that's the back part of the tensioning system and then here at the front as you're tightening this down there's actually a nut in there that you tighten to help tension out the barrel the rest of the way underneath your uh, moderator so the barrel itself is very very rigid which is nice you're not getting a lot of harmonic uh, vibrations going through it which helps with accuracy on the uh, screen here on the back there's actually a spot here where it looks like a full circle that's just telling you that your bolt is in the forward position and if you actually have this open it's an open circle and there's a sensor in here that actually tells you whether or not the bolt is in the forward position and that sensor up here will make it so that you can't fire the gun with the bolt open uh, to prevent you from getting blasted by air now if that sensor ever went out there is a way to override that so that you could finish out like a tournament or something of that type but it's something that you want to get fixed right away if you can on the back too you got your battery indicator and then you can actually if you hold this open and you hold this button and your power button at the same time you can open up a menu and that allows you to switch in and out of the different modes that the gun offers there's also a shot counter in here and when i was talking to bill and daryl at scout they were saying that they've found that the gun will shoot about 80,000 rounds before it fails. So that's pretty remarkable. And then once it does fail, the parts in it that you need to replace, you can just go pick them up from your local dealer and you can just put them in yourself and the gun's back up and running. But it's a really, really cool gun. I think that it's something that we're probably gonna see a lot of as the bench rest season starts up here. And if you're looking for one um, or have questions, you can always reach out to us here. I hope everyone has a good weekend. And while you guys are out there shooting, make sure that you stay safe and have fun. Bye.